So if you want to get your music heard, you need to know about sync licensing. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Stein and today I want to talk about sync licensing or in other words, synchronization. So sync licensing is when music is taken and it's synchronized to pictures or video. So think about YouTube, for example, or uh, a commercial, a TV show. When the opening credits of a TV show, for example, um, the Rembrandts had that had the had the theme song for Friends. I'll be there. I'll be here for you. That's an example. Video games, movies. If you ever play Grand Theft Auto and you have the radio option and you're listening to the radio playing in the car while you're while you're driving around. That's an example of synchronization or sync license. So the thing is, is that there are companies, uh, production companies, movie companies, video game companies, TV shows that are always looking for music. And this is how a lot of artists and specifically songwriters get discovered. Now, I want to I wanna differentiate the, between uh, an artist and a songwriter because songwriters don't always write songs. So for example, uh, Rihanna's song, uh, Diamonds, that wasn't, that wasn't written by Rihanna. It was sung by Rihanna and she is the artist, but there is other songwriters behind that song like Sia. Uh, you may have heard of Sia and other, other artists or other other songwriters who wrote the song. So there's a difference between the songwriter and the artist. Now, uh, where sync licensing comes uh, into play is for the songwriter. Okay, so for a songwriter and also uh, with the songwriter's publisher. Now, uh, when we're talking about a publisher, uh, many of you have watched some of my videos about distribution, digital distrib distribution to like Apple Music, to Google Play, Spotify, whatnot. And I use uh, CD Baby Pro and I use also sometimes DistroKid with SongTrust. So if you have DistroKid who normally doesn't collect royalties for your songwriting, they just primarily co collect mechanical royalties for streams and whatnot. And if you don't know about this type of stuff, you can go watch some of my other videos on royalties. But if you use DistroKid, you need SongTrust to collect your publishing. Because if you're the songwriter, DistroKid doesn't collect those royalties. You need SongTrust. In other words, on the CD Baby side, regular CD Baby is like DistroKid. You need, you need CD Baby Pro to get your publishing and they act as your publisher. Now, one of the things that many big artists do is they have a record label. They have a contract with a label and the label acts as their publisher. And they, you probably know about a lot of examples of, of artists who have good deals and artists who have bad deals. But in terms of publishing, someone is going to collect when you put something out, when you publish your music, when you put it out there, that organization that is, that is collecting and, and, and looking at all the data of where your music is being played, that's why they take a percentage. Now, a licensing company is a bit different. Now, if you're wanting to get your stuff synced to, to video games or movies or you know, elevator music, whatever it is, you need a licensing company. Now, most labels and most publishing companies have a sync licensing division that handles this, but you may not be signed to a label. You just may be an indie artist and you may not have the connections of a label or uh, you may not know anybody who is working in this kind of side of the music business, but uh, you need a licensing company and this is where the information for the independent artist is important because oftentimes 
you may get hit up, you may get, you may get emails by, um, let's think of a company like Taxi. And uh, I'm not bashing any of these companies. I'm just saying, as an example, you may get emails about these particular companies and services that are offering money because they have relationships with these these music directors that are working on on movies and whatnot and they're looking for music so in order to get placed sometimes people are going to pay uh, a group like taxi or or some other group that's a licensing company in order to broker out that music to the people that need to use it now um the thing is about being an artist, songwriter, uh, usually licensing companies only work with songwriters because it gets kind of complicated when it comes to distributing the money. So, it, for example, if you write your own music and you're the only person, you write your own music, you write your own lyrics, that's going to be kind of the best scenario because licensing companies don't want to deal with all that stuff. You know, some of Travis Scott's songs, for example, have like 15 co-writers. That's that's an extreme example. But licensing companies are a very convenient place for music supervisors to go to find music. And licensing companies want to work with sole songwriters, songwriters that, that, that have written everything for a particular song because it's convenient for them. Okay, so licensing companies are looking for songwriters because the music supervisors of music of, of movies and video games and commercials are coming to them and saying we need more music. Okay, so make sure that if you co-wrote a song or if you have uh, music that's created with a collaborator that they're not signed to a publishing company because if they are they're not going to be able to sync their music in these productions and in these uh, other forms of entertainment because that label is going to want to collect on that money and you may be independent but your collaborator may not be so before you get into all this you need to you need to know who signed to who and especially if you're a soul, soul songwriter and you have the music and you have the lyrics written yourself, it's probably going to be even better for you. Now, um, there's, there's several independent licensing companies. And some of those are Secret Road, All Media, Razor and Tie, Catch the Moon Music, you know. There's tons and tons of these companies and they seem to be popping up all over the place. And the reason why I brought up, you know, you may be getting emails about this is because a lot of them aren't legitimate. Now, the ones I just named are massive and, and they are legitimate, but you may get an email from somebody that isn't legitimate that's claiming to be a licensing company and says, hey, if you, if you send us $100, we'll put you in the next commercial. Well, Just be, be careful of that because the, if they're telling that to you, they're telling that to other people. And if they're sending that out to everybody that makes music, not everybody's music is good enough. Not everybody's music is going to fit the type of things that maybe they have connections to, if they have connections at all. So if you're playing, like for example, heavy metal or gangster rap music, that's probably not going to go into a commercial because commercials typically are are more kind of audience neutral and these kind of specific genres or you know if you're making trance edm or whatever it's probably not going to go into um you know something that is meant for like children or for elderly people or certain products so it kind of just depends if someone's the, what i'm saying is is that if someone comes to you telling you that they're going to place your music and you have some kind of niche music it's kind of it's kind of a red flag okay so unless someone is very specific about what they want and what they need from you it's 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 going to be 
it's going to be kind of a, a red flag for me to get an email from someone that's just promising that they can put my music somewhere, uh, especially for a fee that's up front. So these big, these big licensing companies typically don't take submissions directly from artists or songwriters because they're too big and they don't have enough time. And, and honestly, there's a lot of independent artists out there that are trying to get their music into uh, movies and video games. I mean, think about it. How, I wonder how many rappers or people in a band want their music on the next NBA 2K you know, 2K21 or whatever, you know, every, you know, tons of people play this. Think about, think about music that's in like Call of Duty or in video games, like, like say, for example, you know, like Fortnite or something. If you could get your music into a game like that, just think how much exposure you'd get. So there's tons of people that are, that are contacting these license, licensing companies and they're desperate to get their music in there. Now, all of that to say is that music supervisors are the people who are in charge of putting music into games and movies and commercials. One way that you can, of course, short of knowing people who know people and all that, you can actually reach out to independent um, or as an independent artist, you can reach out to music directors, music supervisors. One way that you can do this is through LinkedIn. You can, you can, you can Google people's names. You can Google companies. You can go to LinkedIn and look for music supervisor. I think a lot of people who have this position want people to know it because it's prestigious for one. But because they may put that on their social media, maybe they put that on their Instagram account or their bio, Facebook, Twitter, just do some searches for music supervisors and make a list of people that you can contact. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to go to a movie, specifically for movies, a movie uh, website like imdb.com where you can, you know, you can look at the actors and the directors and all that. You can also find music directors. So if you find, let's say, let's say just some random movie, like, you know, if, if, if you, if you think that your, that, that your genre fits into action movies, you know, you may want to go find the, your favorite movies that you think that your music will fit into and then look through the credits and find the music director. And they're probably working on a movie right now. Uh, so maybe you should find, go on those websites, find the music directors that work on the movies that you think are the most relevant to your genre or your particular style of music. And then go find those people on LinkedIn or go find their Twitter handle and send out a message. Now, I know that there's probably a ton of people that are doing this already. These people constantly get emails and... Um, it's it's probably overwhelming for them so it's it's probably not you know it's probably not a a lot of you know a lot of chances for you and i to do this but it is maybe worth a shot now if you are an artist that's wanting to do covers uh for youtube or if you want to release a song that um that another artist or another label owns because keep in mind a lot of these labels they want to make money off their artists and so when an artist records a song the label is going to take ownership of that recording some people call it the master but the sound recording is owned by the label but they're also going to take a percentage on the songwriting and so they are in charge of deciding which, which if, if, if a music supervisor goes and says, okay, I want Beyonce's you know, next hit to be in our movie, they're going to have to pay her a crazy amount of money because if her song is in that movie or in that commercial, tons of people know who she is. It's a very good marketing tool to use someone that that, that a lot of people know and they, they like the music. So if she has a if Taylor Swift or Drake or someone that's huge, if their music is in a commercial or a movie, 
you can bet that they're getting they're paying a ton to the labels that represent these artists. Now, here's the thing is that if you want to cover like a Drake song or a Taylor Swift song on your next album, you're probably never, ever, ever going to be able to get into contact with the licensing or the synchronization division of that publishing company, which is under the label. Okay, so you have the label and in the label you have the publishing part of the label and inside the publishing you have a division that handles the synchronization. These labels are enormous and if you're wanting to clear, let's say clear a sample, um, which is going to cost you maybe tens of thousands of dollars for, for a really big artist and or a big song. Um, that's just a guess off the top of my head, but it's crazy expensive. The chances of you getting in contact with one of these synchronization divisions is very, very slim. They just, they're not going to answer emails from, you know, Joe Schmo, uh, you know, guitarist on YouTube. So for you who are looking to, to do covers, I feel for you. Um, I might do a video on that later, but but I don't really want to get into that right now just because it's so difficult and it, it's 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 really kind of complicated. And honestly, people, big companies aren't wanting to work with, with everyday people that are just, you know, that aren't famous already. That's just the facts. That's not just with sync licensing. That's also with, <laughs> that's also with signing artists. They're not going to sign some nobody. They're not going to sync license out to some nobody. It's not worth their time. And unless that person's paying tens of thousand dollars for them to do it, it's, it's not worth anybody's time to even answer the email. But, okay, so maybe, maybe you're not going to get your music into the next, you know, Sony commercial or into the next Nike commercial. But what you can do is that there are what's called music libraries and licensing companies that are looking for music for uh it's kind of like the the music version of like shutterstock so let's say you start your you, you created a website and you want some graphics in the background and you go to shutterstock and maybe you've looked up maybe you've tried to find a picture like this on google images or whatever and you see like the the watermark over the picture because it's you have to pay to use the pic to, to get the the watermark off now that's protecting that's protecting the photographer's work from being used without getting paid for it. And it's the same thing with your music. In the same way that people look and Google pictures to use for their websites, people like um, wedding photographers who create these like 30 minute videos and, and they need background music and they may not want to use the most famous music and they may not be able to afford famous people's music. There's music libraries that pay people, that pay artists and songwriters to put their songs on these catalogs for everyday people who need background music for their videos and whatnot to use. And this could help you make some extra money. You know, if you if you get signed by, you know, Kraft Foods to put your music in their next big commercial, you may make a hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars. But that's probably far and few between, especially for people that are just starting out and maybe don't have much of a following. But um, if you're looking to make money through sync licensing, the easiest way to do it is maybe through one of these music libraries. And um, you can look into that and maybe make, you know, 10 to 50 bucks for someone using your song in one of their productions, uh, like a music uh, maybe a, a, a video of some type or like a, uh, a wedding video. But um, the, obviously the, the other easy way to make money from sync licensing is to put your music, your original music, if you are the songwriter, in YouTube videos. So for example, I have, I released an album, a hip hop album called The, uh, called the Artist. And I recently released a, a single, a country single called Perfect Storm. Now, if someone puts that music in their YouTube video, because I have associated those songs 
with uh, my particular publisher, which is DistroKid. Uh, I'm sorry, with the with my publisher Song Trust. I released the song through DistroKid, but the publishing company is Song Trust. Song Trust is going to um, collect those those sync royalties. And YouTube is good about this. YouTube, you know, has an algorithm and a detection a detection system of music that it hears. So, so for example, I recently I released I recently made a YouTube video for one of my songs off that album and YouTube pinged me, sent me an email and said, "Hey, you're you're using music that has been registered." Now, I had registered the song for me because that's my song. But YouTube recognized it and sent me a message saying, hey, DistroKid or CD Baby Pro, you may get an email from CD Baby Pro saying, hey, you know, you're using, you, someone's using your mu music on YouTube. And, you know, that, that may be upsetting for you, but, you know, at, you're going to be making money off that. So if tons of people are using your music in their videos, um, for someone like me who's who's independent and kind of just starting out, um, that's a good thing. So the vet, the easiest way to get into sync licensing is through these music libraries, uh, through you know like wedding wedding videos and whatnot, or YouTube. So if you can get if you can get your YouTube channel popping or get someone that has a a solid YouTube channel to play your music in the background, that's that's a really, really good start. And then of course you have the big whale of these big corporations that have commercials uh, like Sony, you know, uh, Toyota, these big these big companies that sell big products, Apple. If you could get your music in one of those commercials, the way that you get your 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 money is through a sync license. And this is going to go through your publisher. And your publisher is going to get paid from the company that the, the music supervisor for those commercials, video games, and movies, and um, other places that they use your content. Those music supervisors that are looking for music are going to contact a licensing company. And that licensing company is going to represent you. And when that licensing company places your music with a music supervisor and their whatever media that they're creating, that's going to create for you sync licensing royalties. And that, of course, is going to go to the songwriter and to a, probably a percentage to the, your publisher. It's a lot to take in, I know, but in order for, in order for you to to succeed as an artist it's not just about streams and downloads these days a big a big part of uh the music the money that comes in for for creators or or songwriters is through licensing so if you have any questions please put comments down below if this was helpful in any way please uh subscribe pass it on share with your friends that's really really helpful for me but We'll see you again next time. Thanks for listening.